Today I am talking about my top 6 Google Chrome extensions. By desktop browser market share, Google Chrome is the most used browser with almost 60% of the coverage and it definitely is an amazing browser. But having the extensions actually makes it even better. One thing I want to mention is that these extensions are my top 6 in terms of extensions that are self-contained. I use a couple more extensions like one password or Evernote, but those extensions actually rely on other applications, so they only make sense if you're also using those applications. And the extensions I'm mentioning in this video are basically on themselves or just with the online service or website. Also the order of the extensions is pretty much random and I did not select them based on priority or anything like that. So let's get started with the first one. The first extension I would recommend everybody to install in their Chrome is HTTPS Everywhere. This extension tries to automatically access every website you visit with HTTPS, which makes the whole process more secure. Nowadays many websites already do this by default, but some have the option for HTTPS, but they don't force everybody over to HTTPS. But there are really no good reasons not to use HTTPS, so this is kind of a way for you to ensure that you get the safest version of the website possible. Of course HTTPS is not really a guarantee of security, but with HTTPS you can at least take a look into the browser bar and check if the certificate is still valid and trusted. From the topic of security we now go over to a completely different topic about entertainment and that is all about YouTube. The extension here is called Magic Actions for YouTube and it essentially gives you more options that normal YouTube doesn't offer you. For example you can set certain defaults that are normally not available if you just use YouTube. Specifically you could change the default playback quality to something lower than Full HD to save data or if you have a slow computer the lower quality also helps there. Additionally you can hide the comment area, you can automatically hide the annotations, you can also have more volume control and a special cinema mode that lets you view the video in a cleaner environment without going full screen. One last feature I want to mention in this extension is that you also can take screen grabs for example to show it to a co-worker to make annotations or to create a thumbnail for your own video. But actually this extension offers so many functionalities that you should definitely check it out for yourself and take a look at the options you have there. Next up we have the extension Momentum Dash. Momentum Dash is actually a replacement of your new tab page. When opening a new window or a new tab without Momentum Dash you normally get this Google search and application launcher. With Momentum Dash you get a nice picture in the background, you get the current time, you get a nice quote, you also get a couple features in terms of focus and to-do list management and you get weather information and additional bookmarks. I personally disabled almost all the features this Momentum Dash offers. I just kept the to-do list to have a quick overview of all my big picture projects, so I don't really see tasks in Momentum Dash, but instead I have the big picture, the projects I'm working on, and the finished deliveries I have to make in the next couple of weeks. Also I really like the quotes down in the bottom and the background picture. But other than that I disabled everything else. I've been using Momentum Dash for many months now and I have tried to find an alternative with less functionality because I basically just care about the picture and a little bit about the quote, but there is not a good alternative out there, especially in terms of background pictures where Momentum Dash actually curates them perfectly. From this we continue over to Facebook. Facebook is a great way to share things, to stay connected, to keep in touch with friends or family, but for me it also is a very big distraction. But I'm not really able to block the whole of Facebook from my computer because I use advertisement or I manage groups and pages on there. So the main problem I have there is the newsfeed. The newsfeed basically is designed to keep you there. Whenever I come to Facebook I normally just see a couple stories and then I start scrolling because it's so interesting but then I never stop scrolling and after a couple minutes I think why am I doing this? Uh, I had something else planned. So the newsfeed eradicator is an extension for Google Chrome that helps you minimize this problem by just hiding the complete newsfeed. So you can come to Facebook, do your thing, but the main newsfeed is hidden from you. So if you go to a page or a group, the newsfeed is still there, but the normal facebook.com newsfeed, that is just the stuff you liked or you participated in or your friends have posted, those things are completely gone and you can just navigate wherever you have to go after hitting the normal front page. So if you care about your productivity and you use Facebook, I would highly recommend you check out the newsfeed eradicator. From Facebook and social productivity, now we go over to performance in the browser. Oftentimes I feel Google Chrome is the application that uses the most resources on my computer. And that might be true because it basically is everything I do. There is email, there is chat applications, there is document management with Google Drive, and of course research. So there is so much going on in Google Chrome that it's really hard for the browser to keep all that open and ready for you at all times. But there is an extension for you that can help you 
minimize the memory use and performance that Google Chrome needs. The name of this extension is the Great Suspender. And what this extension basically does is that after a certain time frame that you can set in the options, or after hitting a certain keystroke, the tab you're currently in or the tab you have not used for a certain time will automatically be suspended, which means that the memory use of this tab will no longer be as significant as before. The extension is actually made in a way that it should not kill the tab if you type some text there, if you're watching a video there, if there's music playing. But you have to be careful, sometimes this does not work out as intended. The best way I found to kind of work around this problem is to actually whitelist certain websites so I never lose my input on those. But also they're never going to be suspended. So you kind of have to look into those options and know what you're doing there. But I think it's definitely something you should check out. And for me, it feels like my computer and browser is faster since using it. And number six in this lineup is called Video Speed Controller. Now you're on YouTube right now watching this video, but are you watching it at one time the speed, like normal speed, or are you actually speeding up videos to watch them faster? I personally want to consume a lot of content, but oftentimes people speak too slow. This actually first started in the world of podcasting, where apps actually gave you the option to speed up what you're listening to. So if you have a podcast that is one hour long, you can actually listen to it in 45 minutes or maybe even half an hour. YouTube actually already has this option if you go to the lower right, there is a gear icon and there you can find speed control. The speed control then lets you make the video faster or slower. But if you want to have more granular control, more speed than YouTube offers, and you want to be able to use this functionality with all HTML5 videos, then you should have a look at the video speed controller because this is exactly what it does. After installing video speed controller in your Google Chrome browser, you actually get a control in every HTML5 video to the upper left side. There you can either speed up the video or you slow it down, but you can also do the same thing with keyboard shortcuts. Those keyboard shortcuts most often only work if you actually clicked into the video first. So sometimes you pause the video by doing so, but just replay it again. After that, you can control the speed by S and D. So S makes it slower and D makes it faster. Please let me know in the comments down below. Now after the top six is finished, I already mentioned in the beginning, I use a couple more extensions and maybe I even use those more often, like for example, one password to log into websites and store passwords or credit card information. But I think these six are very interesting for almost anybody as long as they are using Facebook or YouTube, for example. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments down below which extensions you use in your Google Chrome browser, or if you even use Google Chrome. Also share this video if you know someone who might find it useful and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this every day. Now I'm going to enjoy the sunset and I will see you tomorrow.